As you can see, I like my wearables. This one's just a wedding ring, by the way. But I was shocked to find out that many wearable manufacturers are outright lying to users. And most frustratingly, it's about one of the most important numbers that these devices give you, resting heart rate. The best way to illustrate the problem is to look at my resting heart rate, as measured by three watches that I wore for a week when I was testing their performance. Fitbit, 53 beats per minute, nice. Mi Band, 51 beats per minute, that'll do. Apple Watch, 44 beats per minute. Hang on, what? So who's right? Am I reasonably fit with a resting heart rate in the low 50s or a full-on athlete at 44 BPM? <laughs> I mean, it's the former, obviously. But what's going on here? The problem is that different devices use different algorithms to determine your resting heart rate. Over to Dr. Rohin Francis, heart specialist and who you might know from his excellent YouTube channel, Medlife Crisis. There are different algorithms for a lot of how the different devices measure uh, heart rate. And I think nowadays most of them uh, will take a, a waking measurement, but certainly the, an early Fitbit that I had seemed to just take a 24 hour average, um, which uh, gave me a very misleading figure, uh, uh, way lower than, than what I was measuring my resting heart rate to be in the daytime. The key thing here is how resting heart rate is usually defined. As we found out in the last video, this is your heart rate at rest. So that typically means when you're not doing anything for at least a few minutes. So about five minutes of inactivity while you're awake. 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 And what's frustrating is that the algorithms behind these devices aren't public. So while they're no longer quite as stupid as just taking a 24 hour average, we still don't know exactly what the manufacturers are doing here. We can try to work out how different manufacturers pick the resting heart rate by comparing them to my all day heart rate measurements. These are all the readings of my heart rate on a day when I was testing out a few different devices, ranging from just below 40 BPM at the low end to 160 odd BPM at the fastest while I was exercising. These values are from a Polar H10 chest strap, so they're the closest we can get to my true heart rate to compare with an Apple Watch, Fitbit and Mi Band. We can split these up into the times when I was active, resting, or asleep, and then overlay the watch's estimates of resting heart rate, like this. The Fitbit and the Mi Band both seem to choose a value close to the bottom of the heart rates when I wasn't moving, which makes sense. But it's hard to know what Apple is doing here. It looks like maybe they're basing it on values while I'm asleep, but their website is pretty vague about how it works. Some manufacturers are a bit more explicit about what's going on. But three big ones I found information for, Garmin, Whoop and Aura, all specifically and proudly explain that they calculate your resting heart rate while you're asleep. The Aura ring is particularly misleading, giving you one value called lowest RHR, which they define as your lowest resting heart rate value captured during the night. My resting heart rate on the night I uh, was deepest asleep was 34, which again, very, very low. If I look at that, if that's what my aura ring had told me my resting heart rate was, I would think, man, I am super fit. Yeah, you're Tour de France level. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, clearly that is not the case. You know, yeah. just, just, just look at me. Um, <laughs> oh, harsh. Because <laughs> th that just bears no resemblance. No, that's very misleading. And you'll see often people slow profoundly in sleep. So I have tried this on myself and I was hitting sort of 30, I was hitting 28 when I was a bit fitter than I am now, um, but very transiently. Um, you know, there are physiological changes depending on which phase of sleep you're in. And in some of them you can go really slow. So that, that would be really misleading to say that's your resting heart rate. Some of you in the comments on the second video in this series were concerned about my low overnight heart rate and suggested I should see a doctor. So first, thank you for your concern. But then I did check with a cardiologist and his response was to show off that his used to be even lower which means, I guess, I'm probably okay. But why do so many manufacturers report resting heart rate at night when that's not the conventional definition? Well, let's start with the possible cynical reason. If your aura ring flatters you by telling you that your resting heart rate is super low, you can brag about it to your friends at the gym and post screenshots on the app on your Instagram, and you might be more likely to be happy with your aura ring and maybe keep paying the subscription. There is a potentially less cynical reason too. As we saw in that earlier video, heart rate measurements taken overnight, when you're lying nice and still and ambient light levels are low, are often more accurate than the daytime ones, sometimes substantially so. 
so readings will probably be more consistent than measurements taken during the day. Unfortunately, this does mean it's very hard to compare between manufacturers. If a Fitbit, Apple Watch, and Aura Ring user all walk into a bar, the guy with the Aura Ring may emerge the smuggest about his resting heart rate. The Apple user is obviously the smuggest overall. But it might be that the Fitbit wearer is actually fitter than both of them, despite his watch giving him a higher value for resting heart rate. The bigger problem is that all of this makes it very hard to compare with the standard medical range, usually given as 60 to 100 beats per minute, where most of us should probably be aiming for somewhere toward the lower end of that range. These numbers were established in big medical studies, where resting heart rate was measured by a doctor or a nurse in a clinic, not by taking a 24-hour measurement and then trying to find a way to extract the lowest possible number to make the user feel good about themselves. If you're looking at this graph of heart rate versus risk of death from the last video, and thinking, wow, my Garmin says I've got a resting heart rate of 43 BPM. I'm going to live forever. Well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, which is a shame because that's exactly what my new Garmin is telling me. These values could make us think that we're healthier than we actually are. An Aura Ring user thinking their resting heart rate was 60 BPM might think they're pretty healthy, but if they're basing that on their lowest sleeping heart rate, then that's very misleading. If it's anything like mine, 20 BPM below their actual resting heart rate. So if you do have an Apple Watch, Aura Ring, Garmin, or Whoop Strap, don't rely on the resting heart rate measurement values given in the app. If you want to compare yourself to the classic 60 to 100 beats per minute range, or your gym buddies who use different devices, then you're just gonna have to sit still for five minutes and see where your heart rate ends up to get a truer reflection of your overall health. In spite of all of this, sleeping heart rate might still be a good measure. It would definitely make sense that people with a lower resting heart rate during the day had a lower one at night too. But sadly, the only paper I could find that made the comparison directly was done in teenage athletes, so quite a specific population, and there are only 11 of them in the study, which means it's not exactly definitive. Do let me know in the comments if you know of any better ones. So I decided to take a look at my own data. On this graph, every point is a day, and along the bottom is my resting heart rate that day, and up the side is my sleeping heart rate that night. As you can see, there's a pretty clear relationship. The points lie fairly close to a straight line. For the nerds, R squared is 0 0.7, where 0 would be no correlation and 1 a perfect correlation. And on average, my sleeping heart rate is about 9 beats per minute lower than my resting heart rate. So it does seem plausible given that resting heart rate is a good measure of overall health and fitness, that sleeping heart rate could be too. Another study I found correlated sleeping heart rate and resting heart rate across 600 people, and found an R-squared of 0.25, meaning that between people, rather than just within me, they are related, but not quite as strongly. But actually, the fact that sleeping and resting heart rate aren't perfectly correlated might be because sleeping heart rate is better the study found that sleeping heart rate was a more accurate predictor of risk of death and risk of heart disease than the daytime resting heart rate was. This is just one study, compared to the huge weight of evidence we've got for resting heart rate. But it does seem possible, maybe even plausible, that sleeping heart rate could be a pretty decent measure. And that would be a happy coincidence for device manufacturers who find it easier to measure your heart rate at that time. Historically, it's been very hard to measure heart rate overnight in a large population, because you'd have needed to strap them up with expensive medical equipment. It was far cheaper and easier to take a one-off measurement sometime during the day. But of course, wearable technology now means that we can monitor heart rates in huge numbers of people 24-7. So hopefully new studies will shed some more light on this. And I wouldn't be shocked if sleeping heart rate did turn out to be better than conventional waking resting heart rate. The trouble is, until we have those studies, and we come up with some kind of a standard, it's really hard to compare values between manufacturers, devices, and the normal medical recommendations. And all that means for now, many of the leading device manufacturers are at best confusing, and at worst, misleading their customers. So share this video with any friends who use one of these fitness tracking wearables, especially if yours is a Fitbit, and theirs is an Aura Ring, or Apple Watch, or Garmin. Watch more videos from my series on smartwatches here. Or speaking of algorithms, the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.